We're going to pull the sheets off a piece of new technology we are pretty sure is going to boggle your mind. This new technology is called the Yamaha Performance Damper, and it's being installed on as many as 20,000 new automobiles every month. When I was first exposed to the Performance Damper, I was frankly skeptical. However, this technology was presented to me by one of the Snowmo industry's most credible and respected individuals. I have known Chris Reed from Yamaha Motor Corporation for almost 25 years. His insights into snowmobiles and understanding of snowmobile technology is outstanding. So rather than attempt to explain what the performance damper is, we're going to let Chris tell the story. Well, initially, performance dampers uh, came about as an application for automobile. Uh, the engineer who designed the performance damper, uh, Mr. Sawai, Seji Sawai, before he came up with the idea for the performance damper, had worked on a project that is now um, a standard equipment on several models out there. Probably the most commonly known one would be the Toyota 4Runner. Every vehicle has a frequency, a natural frequency, that it inherently vibrates and runs at. There's resonance in that vehicle. And their idea was to control this resonance through a system and the best way to control the resonance is to take its frequency and the decay rate of that frequency and increase the decay rate. Okay, it's nice to know automobiles benefit from the performance damper, but what exactly is this device and how does it work? If you look at the performance damper internally, it looks like any normal shock absorber. When you take a deeper look into it, it works almost the opposite of a normal shock absorber. It's able to respond to very high frequency, low amplitude inputs. The saturation point of the oil inside the damper is such that it can move very small amounts very quickly. If you apply wider amplitude, slower frequency inputs into the shock, as what would happen in suspension, if, as hitting a, a, a bump and having a stroke, it moves much slower to the point where a performance damper, if you were to compress it, and it only moves maybe 20 millimeters maximum, could take upwards of 24 hours to come back to its neutral state. I pressed Chris to tell me what the single largest benefit is of the performance damper when mounted on a snowmobile. If I had to say there was one single benefit out of the performance damper on a snowmobile, it would be in bumpy corners or corners that have a bit of chatter to them and, and, and the ability to go through a corner without having to counter steer, without having to compensate for ski lift. I'm not saying it takes all this stuff away, but it does make it better. The whole idea a snowmobile might be flexing has twisted my understanding of what the performance damper actually does. When Chris explained all vehicles produce resonance, including bridges and buildings, the idea behind the performance damper finally sunk in. This inherent frequency of vibration is not a flex problem. It's a reality with anything that moves. Any one of these vehicles will have a frequency in its natural state, but they all have a frequency. It doesn't matter what level that frequency is. The performance damper will take any vehicle at whatever frequency it vibrates at, however it resonates, however stiff or not stiff it is, whatever's getting past the suspension systems through the springs and the dampers into the chassis, it will take this energy that's resonating throughout this vehicle that needs to go somewhere, and it will take its decay rate and increase it. In other words, chop that resonating frequency down so it becomes much shorter. Does the performance damper uh, being used on a sobe mean that there's something inherently wrong in the vehicle? No, the performance damper can be used on any vehicle. It's used on helicopters. It's used in buildings and bridges in Japan and construction and architecture. Performance dampers have a place in engineering. It's controlling frequencies, unwanted vibration, unwanted amplitudes going through a chassis. Snowmobiles aren't any different than a car or that bridge in Japan. I think it's kind of cool one of the two performance dampers used in a snowmobile application is exposed, mounted on the rear bumper. Yamaha's experimented with mounting locations for the performance damper and determined the very best locations to get maximum benefit. There's been a lot of trial and error experimentation with performance dampers. Again, it started on cars. But we've also done the same thing with the snowmobile application as to where you should mount it and why. And it really does connect to what it's doing. But we've found they work best in pairs and they work best in the forward and aft position of the vehicle. Uh, we've also found that it, they tend to have a bit more effect if we mount them cross-platform as opposed to longitudinally in the frame. 
so on the snowmobiles we've chosen to mount it out back. Um, we could put it on the tunnel, but the most convenient spot is to mount it to the rear grab bar. And it should be noted, these performance dampers mount rigidly. There's no heim joints, there's no bushings, there's no movement in the shock. Interestingly, Chris feels the effect of the performance damper is most tangible when the snowmobile is ridden hard and the rider takes the vehicle to his or her limits. We're all different in the speed that we're comfortable reaching with the vehicle. And I found personally that the harder I'll push the performance damper, the more it gives me back. And it's your own comfort level. It's where you start getting into an area where you're having to compensate for the bumps coming at you, for the speed that you're going into the corner, how you react to ski lift, how it makes you feel. The performance damper will give you more confidence at that point. But we all have different levels that we ride at, different comfort levels. We drilled down with Chris to understand better how the performance damper absorbs energy, turning it into heat and to clarify just how incredibly firm, yet still movable, the performance damper is when it's doing its job. The performance damper, when you look at a cutaway, it looks very, very close to what you would consider in a normal suspension shock absorber. But the reality is it almost works the opposite way. In other words, it's able to move very quickly with a very small amount of input. But when you give it a lot of input, if you were to push it, try to push it an inch, the resistance that it gives you back is incredible. And even though it's held in a centered point by pressure both sides, negative spring and a gas-charged floating piston, if you were to push it out of that center, it could take over 24 hours for that force to bring it back to center. So its reaction to large movement, large amplitude force, big flex in the frame is very slow but its ability to react to vibration, to real high frequency, uh, quick amplitude inputs is amazingly fast. We wondered if it was possible to build adjustability into the performance damper, like a compression adjustable shock or an adjustable steering damper. Turns out we need to constantly frame our understanding of the performance damper with the reality of high frequency vibration, not the kind of movement a suspension shock damps, this resonance, although tiny in actual measurement, can affect handling, and more importantly, the feel of your snowmobile when cornering or riding bumps. The shock itself, oftentimes, I think its maximum movement would be about 20 millimeters, but in application, it very seldom moves more than one or two millimeters, and that would be at more low amplitude movements, in other words, flex in the frame. And most of its benefit doesn't come from controlling flex. It comes from controlling all the vibration and the, and the resonance that's going on in the frame. That resonance oftentimes means you're going to measure the movement in the shock by microns. It's very small movement, but it's moving very quickly at a very high frequency. The performance damper is not flash in the pan technology. It's been around and it has proven itself in other motorized applications. Yamaha is serious about its benefits for snowmobiles. You know, it's interesting how Performance Damper came to Snowmobile. The engineer who was in charge of developing it on the automobile side was recently transferred to Snowmobile, and it was Seji Sawai who suggested we try it on a snowmobile. We didn't go seeking it. We didn't even know it existed, to be quite honest with you. But when Seji explained what it did and the success they had in automobile, we decided we should try it on the snowmobile. That was three seasons ago. This past season, we've given early deposit customers a set of performance dampers on their what we call CBU units, but the Japanese built Yamaha snowmobiles a uh, set of performance dampers to try on their apexes or vectors. Ultimately, everyone who sees the performance damper wants to know if Yamaha is going to make its standard equipment on future snowmobiles. We are looking really with the performance damper is kind of growing it. It's not something that everybody's going to get right away. We want to manage our expectations with performance damper. The last thing I'd want to do is say the whole world needs performance dampers and it's going to change your riding experience night and day. It's not that kind of thing. It's subtle. It definitely makes a difference. It will improve the handling of the vehicle, but it may not do it to the level that some people would expect if we made it readily available on everything. So we are doing a, what we call a soft launch. We're, we've included it on some of our machines this year. We want to hear the feedback. We want to see how the market reacts to that. If it's as favorable as I personally think it's going to be, then yes, we will put it into select models as production. Now you know what the performance damper actually is. 
keep your eye on future Yamaha snowmobiles. You may see more of the performance damper in the not too distant future. If you like this video, post a comment and tell us what you think. Then click on this link to subscribe to Snowtracks TV here on the YouTube channel.